Welcome to Traveling Kansas and the Western Vistas Historic Byway. The byway covers 102 miles of natural and human history, from prehistoric times to the settling of the plains. The historic sites and museums weave a tale of westward expansion into the wild west of legend, where American Indians hunted bison, pioneers trekked, and cowboys roamed the vast and beautiful prairie. Visit a rugged landscape along the route of the Western Vistas Historic Byway. Western Vistas Historic Byway is underwritten by Oakley Tourism, Wallace County Visitors Bureau, and Scott City Travel and Tourism. More information is available at westernvistashistoricbyway.com. This program is brought to you by the Kansas Department of Wildlife, Parks, and Tourism. Find out more information about Kansas communities at travelks.com. The route travels U.S. Highway 40 from Sharon Springs East to U.S. Highway 83 South through Oakley into Scott Lake State Park and through Scott City. You can start your tour from the south, the west, or right in the middle here in Oakley. We can provide you with brochures, site information, and even a map to help guide you along your trip. Come spend the day or weekend in Scott County, rich in history and full of fun. In Scott City, you can find a variety of unique shopping for a rural community. Breathtaking views can be found at Lake Scott State Park, Monument Rocks, or even enjoy your own personal buffalo tour. So venture to Scott City and create memories that will last a lifetime. Hi, I'm Stephanie Fisher and welcome to the El Cordaleo Museum in Scott City. You can follow me on our timeline that traces natural history to Native American history and pioneer settlement to present day Scott County. We begin with the Western Interior Seaway, an ocean covering Kansas, giving us these famous rock and fossil formations. Our marine fossils feature Mosasaur and Xyphactinus, which were some of the largest creatures in that ocean. Kids and adults enjoy our sandbox and exploration area with several drawers and tools to identify fossils and more. Here in our Plains Indian Village, with small buffalo hide teepee and travoy, we show the many artifact finds as well as native wildlife. We have a model of El Cordaleo Pueblo and a furnished room, and then move into regional history since the late 19th century with this display of the battle at Punished Woman's Fork. Our early settlement features our Saudi and most notably our town founder, Maria de Geer, who staked her claim here in 1884, seeking to establish a temperance community. Our timeline continues with history of cattle trails, railroads, and agriculture. Of course, our toy display is popular, as well as our pipe organ, which you are encouraged to give a try. In addition to our free tours and our renowned historical bus tour, the museum offers programs throughout the year for homeschoolers, local schools, and events for adults. Uh, the Jerry Thomas Gallery and Collection is located with the El Corleo Museum in Scott City uh, at the western edge of Highway 96. We are uh, a institution that features both a timeline with El Corleo Museum through the history of Scott City. We are very excited to be showcasing some of the finest collection of Punish Woman's Fork Battle artifacts, uniforms, guns, memorabilia, ephemera, and also Civil War, uh, Custer Battlefield, and Cowboy Trails artifacts, along with my award-winning uh, paintings and bronze sculpture. You can find our hours and more information at elcordaleomuseum.org or find us on Facebook. My name is Phil Gould. I'm the park ranger here at Historic Lake Scott State Park. So we're located about 15 miles north of Scott City. And one thing that makes this park so unique is when people are driving out here, they're driving across flat terrain and then they, uh, they drop down and see this bowl and this amazing view of all these rocky bluffs um, and it's just not what they're expecting. It's always a big surprise to visitors when they come out here. We've got about a hundred primitive campsites and uh, 57 utility sites. If you want to reserve a site, uh, whether that's a utility site or a primitive tent site, you got to do that pretty far in advance. Um, the utility sites are just about full all year long. Yeah, we've got two cabins. Um, they both sleep about six people 
and that's another very popular amenity of this park and that's something that you know if you call and want it for next weekend you're probably going to be out of luck they're typically booked every weekend all summer a month or two out in advance so the steel home is one of those um, those reasons this park got renamed historic lake scott and the steel home was the home of some homesteaders that eventually sold this land to the state of Kansas um, and it was their vision of one day for this place to be turned into a state park or a recreation area and so the steel home just recently went a renovation definitely one unique feature of this lake is that we are spring fed and being out in western Kansas you wouldn't think that you'd have a lake that's consistently full like this because of the amount of rainfall but because we're spring fed we're almost always full if you want to look at um, more information on the park you can go to kansasoutdoors.com and just click on the Parks tab and look for Lake Scott under there. So Little Jerusalem uh, has been approved in the legislature to become a new state park in Kansas. It's just uh, north about 15 minutes from here and it is still in the process of getting the infrastructure developed, the parking lot and the trails and that sort of thing, but it is in the process of being opened and we're really excited to, to be able to open that up for the public. We've had a lot of people inquiring about Little Jerusalem, a lot of people that are excited to go out there. And right now it is still a work in progress and we'll definitely keep people updated um, as we have a, a better estimation of when the, the opening window will be. Welcome, my name is Danny Segrist. I'm manager at the El Cordillero Museum in Scott City. Uh, we're at the ancient uh, Pueblo site uh, that was here in the 1600s. The Pueblo uh, is the most northeastern Pueblo built in the United States and the only one discovered in Kansas. It was called El Cordillo, which means home far away. Uh, the Taos had built the Pueblo uh, in the late uh, 1500s and 1600s. Uh, they came out of northern New Mexico and they came here to escape the Spanish uh, uh, slavery that was going on. So they came here and built a Pueblo and lived here for about 20 years. A, another Pueblo group known as the Pickeries revolted against the Spanish in 1690 and wiped out all the settlements. So then they left to escape retribution and they came up and lived here in the Pueblo for about three years. There's also one other uh, interesting fact about the Pueblo that it could have been the first white settlement in Kansas. That French traders operated a trading post out of here in the middle 1700s. By 1727 it was abandoned and was never used again until it was excavated the first time in 1898. And the homesteader here, Herb Steele, who homesteaded this area, uh, discovered that there was something unusual about this site. And so he got word to those archaeologists somehow up there and they came down and looked at this site and they'd done a, a little bit of hand excavation and finally discovered that there was something here. And he actually homesteaded this area and this was part of his farm ground. So he come over and done a little scratching around on his own and discovered some pottery shards and different artifacts like that. So that's when he thought that there was something significant here when he got word to the, to the archaeologist up, up north of here. Punished Woman's Fork, the recognition of this place has been uh, uh, very strong. It was originally called Squaw's Den, Battle Canyon, but just the simple name of Punished Woman's Fork being the name because in the 18, early 1800s, a lady uh, with the Cheyenne tribe was, uh, was taken off the tribe because she had uh, been uh, a, not faithful to her warrior. So she was banished from the tribe and it was called Punish Woman's Fort. That stuck and on all the, all the ephemera that you see and maps and different uh, material it is called Punish Woman's Fort. So we rejuvenated that name and it has really brought prominence to this beautiful site. Come for a visit and spend a little time in Scott County, exploring and creating memories. The rich history of our community and the beauty of Scott City is woven with friendly folk in an ideal location, making a tapestry that can only be described as an exceptional way of life. Scott City is a town full of comfortable charm that offers a rural, peaceful quality of life, 
not simply for those who live here, but just as importantly for those who visit or travel through Scott City. I'm Richard Duff with Duff's Buffalo Ranch. Uh, we are located about uh, 20 miles north of Scott City uh, on the Ben Ranch and uh, we run bison here on around 36 to 3700 acres of, of native rangeland. Uh, we have approximately 160 head of cows uh, and their calves and then the herd bulls so uh, we have around 320 head out on the range right now. It seems like uh, the thing that I really enjoy the most uh, is uh, having people come from all over the country, even other countries people have come and a lot of people have an image of western Kansas that it's flat, plain, boring, and virtually everyone that comes here is, is really pleasantly surprised and excited. They really enjoy uh, the time that they have. And you know, it, this isn't a massive ranch, but it's a large enough track, and we're kind of in an area here where there's kind of a, a valley, a saddle. So where we're down in, even though the highway's just up above us, you can't really see it. And uh, there's a large enough group of animals you can kind of uh, look out and you don't see a lot of development and you can kind of get a feel for what it may have been like in the old days when there were uh, vast numbers of bison you know roaming across the the prairie. The best way to reach us to set up a tour is yeah probably calling is the best uh, my phone number is 620-874-5120 or my wife's is 620-874-2117 like for larger tours, if you want to get a hold of the uh, El Cordaleo and Jerry Thomas Museum in Scott City, they can set you up with the, what they call the historic uh, tour, where they do the historical sites, uh, they do the, uh, the bison herd, and then also uh, like monument rocks, or hopefully down the road when it ever opens up Little Jerusalem, they're hoping to be able to do tours there as well. But we can be, uh, you know, we tie in with them on that. You'll want to stop at the kiosk just south of Keystone Gallery. This is a great panoramic photo op of the vistas illustrated there on the storyboard. The kiosk on Highway 83 is the first kiosk of its design in the state of Kansas. I'm very delighted to have designed the hexagonal structure and it to be the first one built on one of the byways here in the state of Kansas, in particular the Western Vistas Byway. This is where you can immerse yourself in the vast expansion of the plains. The buffalo are often by the road, and you can picture what it must have felt like to stand in the exact same place hundreds of years ago. I'm Chuck Bonner, and we're at Keystone Gallery in rural Logan County. We're about 26 miles from Oakley and 18 miles from Scott City, so we're conveniently located in the middle of nowhere. And uh, what we specialize in mostly are local fossils from the late Cretaceous period. Um, there was an inland sea from the present day Gulf of Mexico all the way to the Arctic Circle. And what we find mostly are things that lived in the water, but we also find pterodactyls, as you can see on the mural back here, as things flying around. So uh, the best pteranodon type of pterodactyl are all from Kansas and that was they were found back in the 1860s so there's been fossils being found out here for a long time and they'll be continued because we're kind of like farmers it, we need rain for it to expose more fossils so the rain is important. Uh, a lot of kids when they first come in they think dinosaurs right off the bat. Well they're all of the same age as dinosaurs except there was water here so we don't get many dinosaurs. You can, you can check our website keystonegallery.com and it has all the information about us and everything. And it's also got a history of my family involving uh, paleontology. And also the other thing we have featured in here is our, my paintings. But I've kind of been involved in, in both fossils and art for a long time. I think our area really, the vistas really come out when you get through this area because we're talking about monument rocks and just wide open and you get a chance to see a lot of prairie. And some of, the, some of the byway has more farm ground, but when you get to drive through this area in the Smoky Hill Valley, you get to see a lot of the open space in that respect. Imagine an ancient sea that extended from the present day Gulf of Mexico to the Arctic Circle. 
When the water receded and erosion set in, the seafloor's limestone layers became not only flat plains, but oddly placed shaped buttes and chalk formations. Rising above the plains is Monument Rocks, a series of large chalk formations rich in fossils formed approximately 80 million years ago. Monument Rocks plays an important role in the history of the Smoky Hill Valley area. In the 1860s, the Smoky Hill Butterfield Overland Dispatch Trail used Monument Rocks as a landmark to guide travelers through the region. Known locally as the Chalk Pyramids, Monument Rocks was inducted as the first national natural landmark in Kansas by the Department of the Interior on October 31, 1968. There are no public restroom facilities, gas stations, or restaurants in the immediate Monument Rocks area. The county dirt roads can also get muddy when it's wet. This is private property, so be respectful and do not climb on the rocks or take anything except pictures from the site. No camping or fires are allowed. Other chalk bluffs can be seen on the byway at the Smoky Valley Ranch hiking trails and the Little Jerusalem Badlands State Park set to open soon. Follow us on the Western Vistas Historic Byway Facebook for updates. The Buffalo Bill Cultural Center is a community partner travel center for the state of Kansas. We can help you with your local and statewide Kansas trip planning. Stop in to relax and enjoy a cup of coffee, browse the gift shop for souvenirs and gifts featuring many Kansas made products. Visitors are always impressed by the Kansas State Mural by Kansan Dennis Scheel. Filled with our state's attractions, history, and culture, it inspires many to get off the highway and explore our state. There are also interactive displays for kids of all ages. Put together the sculpture puzzle, identify parts of the corn plant, or match the tracks and scat to their Kansas Plains animal. The center is open Monday through Friday 9 to 5 and Saturday 11 to 5 but the sculpture and storyboard are open 24 hours a day for your viewing pleasure. Be sure to visit buffalobilloakley.org or visit oakleyks.com for more information. The Cultural Center has a multi-purpose event center with 3,200 square feet of meeting space that can accommodate meetings for just a few people to parties and events for 250 or more. There's Wi-Fi, internet access, and state-of-the-art audiovisual equipment in every room. In 1868, William F. Cody, Buffalo Bill, earned his living as a contract buffalo hunter feeding the crews, laying the first railroad tracks across Kansas for the Kansas Pacific Railroad. At the same time, William Comstock, who was also called Buffalo Bill by the soldiers at Fort Wallace, made his living providing buffalo meat to feed the soldiers at the fort. As recounted by Buffalo Bill himself in his autobiography, a contest was staged just 10 miles west of Oakley to determine who earned the name of Buffalo Bill. In an eight-hour contest, Bill Cody won the contest with 69 buffalo to Comstock's 46. On that day in the spring of 1868, the legend of Buffalo Bill Cody was born. By the turn of the 20th century, Buffalo Bill Cody had become one of the most famous people in the United States and even the world, and he shaped the world's image of the West with his Wild West show. The Wild West Historical Foundation is a nonprofit 501c3 corporation and was established to create and promote a Wild West experience. Sculptors Charlie and Pat Norton of Leota, Kansas were selected to create a bronze sculpture. Buffalo Bill is mounted on his favorite buffalo running horse, Brigham, and in hot pursuit of a buffalo. The sculpture weighs 9,000 pounds and stands 16 feet high. The sculpture was voted as one of Kansas' eight wonders of Kansas art. My name is Jody Reed and I'm the director here at the Fick Fossil and History Museum in Oakley, Kansas. Uh, this is Vi and Ernest Fick's personal collection and they lived about 15 to 20 miles from the Monument Rocks and they would fossil hunt a couple days a week and in their lifetime found over 11,000 different shark's teeth and then Mrs. Fick has done the artwork throughout the museum with different bits and pieces of fossils that she found. 
they, they started out in our uh, Chamber of Commerce office downtown with some of their pictures, and they talked to the city and said, you know, we have a great collection. If you build a museum, we'll donate our collection, and we opened the doors in 1975. And we have some fossils that were donated by the Sternbergs, who fossil hunted here in the, I believe, 20s and 30s, so we have some really neat artifacts that they've given us. We also have a 15-foot fish that they found down at the Monument Rocks, which is all intact, and it's an amazing exhibit. Then we also have a replica of our depot. Um, we have a sod house that was built in 1975 by the FFA chapter. We have a general store with men's, women's, and children's items that they could have purchased back then. We also have a military display and a replica of our Prather's Creamery that was here once upon a time. We are a free museum, but we certainly do accept donations. Um, our hours are Monday through Friday, 9 to 5, and then Saturday, 9 to 3, and that's from Memorial Day to Labor Day. And then after Labor Day, we're closed during the noon hour, so we're open 9 to noon, 1 to 5, Monday through Friday, and then 9 to 3 on Saturdays. We have our own Facebook page, the Fick Fossil Museum, and then there's also two websites you can visit, discoveroakley.com or visitoakleyks.com. That'll get you as much information about Oakley as you need to know. In 1865, the Smoky Hill Trail was the most direct route from Atchison to Denver and was considered the most dangerous for crossing the plains. The Butterfield Trail Museum in Russell Springs sits directly on the trail. It's also known as the Butterfield Overland Dispatch Route and the limestone BOD posts outside the museum is one of many way markers along the trail. Showcasing the history of the Smoky Hill Trail, the museum offers local and railroad history, fossils of the area, and settlement exhibits. Russell Springs was the county seat from 1887 until an election in 1963 that designated Oakley as the county seat. The museum was the county courthouse and is considered an emblem of the last of Kansas famed courthouse wars and still has the scars where the vault doors were forcefully removed during the relocation of county records from Russell Springs to Oakley. The museum was dedicated in 1965 and is listed on the National Register of Historic Places. Hello, I'm Jane Humphrey Pierce and I'd like to welcome you to Wallace County here on the western leg of the Western Vistas Byway along scenic Highway 40. As you motor along I-40, you are tracing the path of an ancient hunting trail, which became for the white man the most direct route from Leavenworth to the gold fields of Denver. The Smoky Hill Trail was named for the river that spans its length to western Kansas. David Butterfield built a stagecoach line along this trail, and the building of the railroad paralleled the route as well. I-40, the Victory Highway, is the modern traveler's road as they explore this history-filled area. I-40 will bring you to the western boomtown of Wallace, Kansas, where the Fort Wallace Museum enjoys sharing the rich history of western Kansas in an immersive and visual way. The magnificent life-size bronze of William Comstock by Kansas artist Jerry Thomas stands guard at the museum entrance setting the stage for what will be revealed inside. The magnificent barbed wire buffalo bull by folk artist Ernie Poe also reflects on the former king of the plains. Welcome folks, I'm Deb Goodrich, the Garvey historian in residence here at the Fort Wallace Museum. Welcome to the Milford Becker edition. And this is actually my favorite part of the museum right here. The fort, of course, is the piece of history that I love most. And when I saw this recreation of the adjutant's office from 1867, I absolutely cried. Some of the items that we have in the museum are pictured in the photograph taken the day of the battle here at Fort Wallace, June 26, 1867. So this is really special to me. Since we don't have the original buildings from the fort, what we have done in this edition is recreate the facades of some of those buildings. So we have facades of the sutlery, of the officers' quarters, the enlisted men's barracks, the hospital, and the laundress' quarters. And then you move into the old town of Wallace. So when Wallace was in its heyday, we had two mighty fine 
retail competitors in Tom Madigan and Peter Rubidoux, and you could buy anything you could find on the streets of Paris right here in Wallace. So we're really proud of this new addition. We feature the uh, Butterfield Overland Dispatch Stagecoach, and this is a new stage built to Mr. Butterfield's specifications. And then you will find the plesiosaur. So this is a casting of the beast that our scout, William Comstock, and the post-surgeon, Theophilus Turner, discovered in 1867 and shipped to Philadelphia. Believe me, that was quite the attention getter back in the day. So we have a casting as well as some other pretty significant fossil finds from the area that are on display here at the museum. Another new exhibit is the Ray Pump Organ Collection. More than 53 pump organs. It's a magnificent uh, collection. We're so proud to have that move from Sharon Springs into our museum here. We have several buildings that comprise the Fort Wallace Museum complex. So we have the Bethany Lutheran Church that was moved from Weskin to this location. We have the depot from Weskin. And probably our most valuable artifact is the actual Pond Creek Stagecoach Station that is located now right here on the museum grounds. That building dates from 1865, likely the oldest building in western Kansas, and certainly the only one of the BOD stations to remain. Now the Sunderland Poe Building is a, an extensive collection of Ernie Poe's barbed wire art. The Weiser Collection, the um, metal detector Floris Weiser collected for decades items from the location of the fort and various uh, campsites in the area. That is outstanding. It is a valuable collection to any archive. Located just a mile and a half southeast of the museum, the Fort Wallace Cemetery is the last remnant of the early Indian War structures. Located in the center of the limestone walls is a unique monument that was erected by Custer's 7th Cavalry and the 3rd Infantry in memory of those who died in the tragic summer of 1867. Wooden markers mark the final resting places of those who died of violence and disease. And also buried here are the victims of the German family massacre of 1874. It's a fascinating place to feel the history that occurred in western Kansas 150 years ago. The 1879 Kansas Pacific Railroad House is a handsome limestone structure in downtown Wallace that harkens back to an earlier era. It was once known as the finest railroad superintendent's office on this or any other railroad. Don't miss the beautiful views in Wallace County that will give you a whole new idea of what Kansas looks like. Sharon Springs, Kansas is your westernmost anchor of the Western Vistas Byway. Here you can enjoy our hospitality at our restaurants, motels, and convenience stores. Sharon Springs is also the launching point to visit Mount Sunflower, the highest point in Kansas. Come check out Sharon Springs and let us take care of every traveling need. Western Vista's Historic Byway is underwritten by Oakley Tourism, Wallace County Visitors Bureau, and Scott City Travel and Tourism. More information is available at Western Vista's Historic Byway.com. This program is brought to you by the Kansas Department of Wildlife, Parks, and Tourism. Find out more information about Kansas communities at TravelKS.com.